Welcome back to the channel, where I go and actually give you my recommendations on brand new shows and movies out there on the streaming platforms. Today, I'm going to go and actually give you my review for Those About to Die on Peacock. Now, for those that are target audience members, and those are people that are into gladiator movies, period pieces, things of action and uh, political intrigue, I'm going to suggest that you watch the first two episodes of this particular show. However, if you're a casual fan, you're not really into period pieces, you're not into the big political dramas and, and all the things that go along with that, I'm probably going to go and actually suggest that you watch one episode of this particular show. Now, stay tuned, and I'm going to go ahead and actually tell you how I came up with those recommendations. I'll be killed. Let the games begin! Those About to Die is a historical action drama that premiered on Peacock in July of 2024. The first season consists of 10 episodes that are about 55 minutes each. They're based on the book of the same name by Daniel P. Mannix. Now, it stars Iwan Rian as Tenex, Sarah Martins as Kalia, Jojo Macari as Domitian, and a supporting role of Anthony Hopkins as Vespian. I, nah, I probably murdered all those names, but that's why I put the pictures up there for you. So, IMDb has a story like this. This series explores another side of Rome, the dirty business of entertaining the masses giving the mob what they want most, blood and sport. So this series seems to be another in the long line of content that tries to find success in telling stories that combine real life historical places and people that existed in history with some hype, with some exaggerated or fictitious tales sprinkled in there to have it more intriguing, to be more dramatic, be more thematic and what have you. Very similar to like, maybe like Rome or Vikings, it's giving that type of vibe to it. The book that this is based off of was republished in 2001 as Way of the Gladiator, and it was the inspiration for the Russell Crowe movie the Gladiator. So you can definitely feel that vibe in the trailer and kind of know exactly the kind of setting that this series is going for. Now, for me, I'm not really big on this type of content, to be honest. Um, I must most definitely love like historical battles and things like that. That stuff I always find intriguing. But when it comes to like family drama, political discourse and backstabbing betrayal, it's not really my thing. I don't really vibe into it. So I'm probably, matter of fact, I am. I'm going to go and actually categorize myself as a casual for this kind of content. The reason why I want you to know that is that you should always know the perspective of your reviewer when they go ahead and actually give you their recommendations so you know where they're coming from. I watched the first two episodes of brand new shows on streaming platforms to go and actually see if they're worth your time. I watch so you don't have to. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe. And now, let me review this for you. So after watching the first two episodes of this series, it definitely feels like the world of Gladiator. It's There's no if and rhymes or buts to it. You can go and actually do it. There's a direct correlation. I will also go ahead and actually say there's elements of like House of the Dragon as far as like the political entry, backstabbing, all that kind of stuff that goes on there as well. So kind of that's your combination of where you're, what you're into for this particular series. Let me just give you a little bit of feeling what those first two episodes felt like and then kind of just give you my overall feeling about them. So like in episode one, you start off kind of getting that some very annoying uh, narration by Tenix, the character of Tenix, and it's for like the first six minutes that you're being told along this, and they're setting the, the, the world for you up, and you'll notice that tone going throughout these first two episodes, like they're throwing a lot at you, they're, they're speaking to you, and then they're trying to fit everything in there, and there's just a lot in there that they're trying to jam-pack you to go and actually go, this is the world you're in, throwing it in there, and, and going with it, so be prepared for that. Um, another thing in the first episode, they do a lot of uh, jamming the other characters in there and for you to get an un understanding of that. And the biggest thing that I have with that is it's already difficult to go ahead and actually follow things from way back when because you're getting like these names and places that they don't immediately register you. They sound foreign to you, they sound, sound weird or what have you. And so following those names and the places and then trying to keep up with the storylines, it can be a little overwhelming. And it does for me you know, often. Well, maybe that's one of the reasons why I don't particularly like all these because I'm trying to 
make sure that I remember the names and the places, all that kind of stuff, put it all together, who's who, and all that kind of jazz or what have you. But for me, it, it was a lot that they jammed in that, that first episode or what have you. Another thing to note on there is there's a lot of gratuitous uh, sex, nudity, you know, that type of thing on there. Uh, both heterosexual and there's some implication, I think, of uh, homosexuality or whatever. Not that big of a deal, but it's in there just letting you know that it's there. The other thing in the episode one that kind of rubbed me a little bit the wrong way, it's the portrayal of like the slave family that was in there. It's obviously there were slaves that happened in, in Roman times. There's slaves that go all the way back, uh, way before the, the Romans came about. But the portrayal that I have of that family was just not fun at all. Like just, I don't know. It, it just seemed like it was, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. It could be a race thing. I'm not gonna lie that that's probably not a factor, but I don't even think so. I don't think it was even written in a way that you know was convincing to me, or maybe it's the actors, what have you. But that whole family and the way that their dynamic is set up is just doesn't really like mesh with the rest of the tone that the rest of the series is going for. So in that first episode, like I said, there's just a lot crammed in there, and not a whole lot that I'm gonna go and actually say that I grabbed onto or what have you. But they do a lot. They they throw it at you and, and kind of see what sticks. In episode two, they're doing more fleshing out the stories, kind of showing you how everybody's intertwined with other people, what their storylines are going to be, uh, what are uh, the situations and things like that. I will say, I think most of it is very predictable as far as seeing who's going to affect what, who's going to have what's, uh, who's going to have what expectations, who's going to be kind of coming after who or whatever. You kind of see it in, in the very in the. And the inklings of it in the first episode, definitely by the second episode, you got kind of, okay, this is where we're at, and it's nothing unpredictable. I'm not saying that's good or bad, it's just you can kind of see it, you know, happening, and there's nothing that's going to go and actually blow your mind or whatever. By the end of episode two, you kind of have a good judgment on, I think, where this series is going to go, at least for the first season or what have you. But storytelling for me in this series is about a B minus, and you might think, well, hey, you kind of seem like you was kind of down on it or whatever. And hear me out, just because something's predictable or I see things coming or what have you, doesn't mean that storytelling is bad. There's elements of highs, highs and lows that go with this one, okay? The overall storylines are mapped out and they're definitely given complexity sake on there. I mean, you do have to have some uh, very capable writing to be able to intertwine various different characters and storylines and have them intersect or what have you. Even if it's a way of, you know, backdooring some meeting here, coincidental happenings or whatever, you got to give credit to someone that's writing those types of stories. Uh, you kind of really figure out the players immediately and you, and you know what's going on or what have you in the introduction. Uh, the interest in the stories is either having compelling characters um, or having scenes of actions of brutality that really shock you into interest. Now for me, I didn't have either one of those. It wasn't really a big thing for me. So for me, it kind of feels like they're cramming too many people into the storylines and that's kind of really makes it really crazy on there. Uh, in these first couple episodes, to attract the most amount of people. That's why I think they're giving you so many different characters because you know they're hoping that you go and actually glob onto a person either you really like or you really hate and, and that type of stuff on there. But in the facet of storytelling, whatever, the pacing is kind of rushed. And so in that aspect of it, it's really what kind of brings it down. The complexity of it and things like that, I could go and actually rock with and deal with it, but the pacing of it really, um, really kind of it kind of stuffs it up a little bit so like I said B minus for meaning that you know it's it's very much capable it's very much uh, decent story writing what have you but your pacing you gotta go ahead and actually stretch out a little bit more maybe flesh out those characters a little bit more give some of the situations and scenes time to breathe or what have you I'm also gonna go ahead and actually give a B minus to acting okay the reason why I said is that most of the actors are putting forth competent or pretty good performances but none of them individually or even as a group really drew me in. You know, there, there are standouts that you, you hope that there's people that kind of stand out to you be like, oh man, I gotta see what happens to him, or I gotta see what happens to her, what have you. And if you don't get that, if you don't get pulled in like that, then I think the acting is not not done well. Some of it could also be the dialogue. Some of the dialogue was a little stilted, kind of like, uh, whatever. But nobody, it, it, they seem to be wanting to do well, but I personally was not, you know, transported into like, oh, this is like, I, I gotta watch for this character, or whatever. I never really got that feeling or what have you. The person that I think that we're supposed to really want to identify is Tanix, who, who is kind of like this uh, owner of his uh, establishment, and he's kind of like, he's in between the slaves and the gladiators and the people who are forced to fight, and, uh, but he's not a royalty, he's not anybody with power, or whatever. He's in that middle. 
he's supposed to be kind of like the one that you kind of identify with and kind of be able to see see things through. And I don't really quite glob on to him like that. I mean, it's interesting to kind of see some of the stuff, but uh, just nothing really compelling about that. There's also the royalty family of, of the king and, and his sons and uh, some of the things that are going on with some of the people at establishment of power, what have you. They don't Soon I shall cross the kingdom of darkness. But nothing is more important than protecting our beloved Rome. They don't do anything for me either. And so they're doing a competent job, but not so much a compelling job that makes me want to go and actually tune in for specific characters. So I'm going to say a B minus because I think there's some this competency there and I think they're doing the best that they can. People want to go and actually be there. So for me, there's also a little bit for the effort that I'd like to have that there for them. But overall, there's just not a whole lot for me to go and actually be like, ooh, I've got to tune in for that. For main target audience members, the reason why you want to watch the first two episodes is that there are storylines that are complex. They're written for a multitude of characters that you may go and actually like. There are a couple of battle scenes. They're kind of weak. They're not a whole lot on there. I think the biggest thing that you can go and actually get from this particular series is power structure people trying to go and actually gain power to try and climb up their social status that's where this series is going with and that's going to be the intrigue for someone that is a main target audience member for this for casuals the only reason to watch one episode is that you have something that harkens back to the movie the gladiator which gladiator was a good movie and if you want to get transported back to that world and kind of really see if that's something for you this series is going to be competent enough and see if there is actually a character or storyline that really speaks to you, then maybe you'll go and actually watch the entire series. But that's what I have for those about to die on Peacock. Check it out. You stay for the entire review. I really appreciate you. If you like any of this, go ahead and actually click a like, maybe even share it, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Or if you haven't quite convinced you yet that my reviews are good, go ahead and actually take a look at one of these other videos that algorithm seems to think that you might like. But until next time, I'll holler at you. Take care of yourself.